The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right, folks, we'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Glad to be back here. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here at TFNN.com. Don't forget, to, you can listen to us anywhere on your mobile phone at TFNN.MOBI with uh, nine hours of live trading uh, commentary each day by traders that are in the markets and place and trades. Right now, let's check out where the markets are at. We got the S&P. It's currently down about five points on the day. We have the NASDAQ down, too. We have the Russell is up 0.5. We have the Dow down 102. So a massive uh, move right there. Looking on over at gold. Gold is currently down 28 points on the day. We got silver is uh, down 0.866. I mean, some monster, monster moves right there in the metals. And uh, those kind of moves just make you know check your head twice, right? Because that really going on, and uh, but just some you know big big moves, uh, two deviation move right there on gold. We'll go back. We'll uh, check out some of these moves, what was happening with them, and how you might be able to take advantage of them. But we did just get a V spike about uh, I don't know what 12 o'clock right there. So just about an hour ago, we got a great volume spike trade right off the two dev level. Markets been bouncing off that, and um, let's check out what else we got going on right here. So with those, like I said, two percent. Over a 2% down move on gold, 4% down move on silver. We got copper is basically flat on the day. Oil's up 18 cents on the day with natural gas is uh, pretty flat. Uh, not a big move today, which is you know a surprise. Usually it's one of the big movers, but we got the energy sort of being slow at the moment. We got corn right now is down almost six points on the day. Soybeans down 20, and uh, both of those being a little over a one percent move. So some nice moves in the ags. We got euro dollar down 45 pips, pound dollar down 35. Aussie dollar's down 119 pips on the day. We have euro yen up 54 pips, dollar yen up 69, pound yen up 70. Four pips on the day. Dollar cat is currently up 61 with dollar franc up 39. So dollar, king dollar, showing some strength across the board. And, uh, you know, just uh, got back. To, I was out. I went, um, did two things. Had my grandmother's birthday. So she had her 80th birthday this weekend. And uh, then I flew out to Chicago and I got to hang out at the Nadex offices and, uh, you know, meet a lot of the, you know, personnel that make things happen there. And, uh, was going over my scanner with them, and uh, some of the you know step by steps, just different ways and you know things that ways that I use, the way that other traders use it, getting their feedback on it, and uh, so that was really cool. Got to hang out with some great people over there at the Nadex Exchange, and um, even got to go down. Um, I called up uh, Ben Lichtenstein over down. He does the traders audio for the S and P um, pits, and uh, so uh, I called him up, and he got me and my wife in, and we got to go down to the CME and check out. Yeah, you know, just it's really fun just to get to go down there and see bot and go in and you know look at everything, and just see what's happening there on the floor in the pits and how they've changed and uh, you know get some fun pictures and everything else. And uh, you know one of the things you do so much, you, you know you got to visit the floors at least once. And uh, so you know there's all sorts of different usually you know educational things you can do. You usually can't get in unless you know somebody that can help get you in. And uh, but if there's like an educational event you can go on. Um, or, you know, if you're looking for somebody, you know, let us know. I'm sure we can help you find someone. But uh, it's pretty cool. I uh, hung out. One of the easiest ways is to, uh, just to, you know, tip for you, hang out in the series bar right there and right there at the exchange. And they'll be, that's where the traders and the brokers and analysts and stuff, uh, they'll be in there and, you know, just, you know, buy them a beer, talk. And, uh, you know, they might uh, help you, you know, check out the floor, maybe on just a quick guest pass to see what's going on and, you know, get at least that experience. Uh, but uh, I met some pretty cool guys over there. Me and my wife were checking that out and check out the Sears Tower and uh, the glass floors and just uh, Chicago. Chicago in general, beautiful city. Cold as all get out, down to like negative 10. Um, wind chill. I think the night we were leaving, they were saying it could get as low as negative 25 wind chill. And uh, we left, you know, DFW, you know, at 30, 35 degrees, freezing. We get up there, and I mean, it just felt like it was like melting, you know, your face off. So when we came back, and it was like 30 degrees. I mean, it 
felt like a heat front. You know, we just like had this like 30, 40 degree jump in temperature and uh, felt really nice. <laughs> so it's amazing how perspective changes things. All right, let's see. Uh, this week's been pretty light um, on the fundamental, you know, scheduled news. And uh, But I want to just go through a few things. I know there's been, you know, some minutes and all that stuff, but just nothing really major that we were focusing on for the entire week, which is uh, pretty rare to not have uh, just a lot of news announcements coming out. And we're coming up on the holidays and stuff as well, of course. But uh, let's see right here. I said nothing that uh, was big for this entire week. For next week, just to give you a little head start, you know what's coming up uh, the week before we got our Christmas holidays right here around the corner. And um, let's see, Sunday, nothing major. Monday, let's see, we'll have some flash manufacturing pain. My drug, you can have a little speech on uh, Monday morning, so that could give you a little euro dollar um, impact. We'll have the monetary policy meeting minutes coming out of the Aussie. Expect that to be a pretty non-event, uh, pretty big non-event right there. They'll come out Monday night around 7 o'clock. Uh, this coming Tuesday, we're going to have, let's see, CPI out of pound. Uh, so that actually should cause a nice volatility. There's actually six pound announcements. So we'll be looking for some good volatility on the pound um, this coming Tuesday. And then uh, we'll have Canadian manufacturing sales. Um, I'll pull the stats up on that one. I don't think that's going to be one of our major impact reports. And I know uh, one of the big things mistakes traders make is they go and they look at a lot of these calendars, like, say, uh, you know, Forks Factory. And they'll see the red things, and they're like, oh, okay, that's a news announcement. It's a heavy impact. I can trade that. It doesn't mean – it means it's important for the currency long term. It doesn't mean it's going to rock that currency, okay? It doesn't mean it's going to make this thing just, like, go all over the place. So don't go in and trade it just because it's red. You actually need to have the stats on it. So when I try to keep you all up to date with those stats, uh, let's like, uh, you know, like I said, we'll have, uh, going into Wednesday, we're going to have the bank rate votes, unemployment rate, um, asset purchase facility votes, and all that stuff all happening at the same time. So we should get some nice volatility out of the pound Wednesday morning there at 4.30 when all those announcements come out at once. Uh, we'll have some building permits and housing starts um, coming out of the U.S. They're also at the same time going to be releasing their September and October data um, from the delay from the whole government, you know, shutdown issue. So all that stuff's coming out. Uh, the, you know, check out copper. You know, just a, you know, this is a demo trade thing. Go look at like, you know, maybe strangling or straddling copper before all these reports come out. Just think about it. When you got building permits and housing starts and all that stuff, that that leads to people buying copper. So uh, to use in the houses. So uh, you know, if those numbers. You know, come in better or worse than expected. You could have a pretty big move in it. So that's something that, you know, just check out. Maybe look at like a 10 o'clock expiration on it and see what it does. Uh, we got a crude oil inventory coming out Wednesday, every Wednesday there. Uh, the big announcement is going to be coming out next week will be the FOMC economic projections statement and rate. So we got Fed funds rate coming on up next week, just in time for Christmas. So uh, we'll be looking for some potential trades. We'll be looking for some butterflies going into that, some really quiet markets going into it, and then look for some explosions uh, coming out of it in uh, both directions. And there's a lot of ways to trade that. I'm even going to look at a couple of different ways that we haven't talked about before um, on the show on how to trade that announcement because we basically go right into it with, with my show here because it goes from 1 to 2 and the announcement comes out at 2. So I'll lay out a couple ways, different ways to trade it that we haven't discussed before. And uh, then we'll have the press conference at 2.30. So, of course, that can, uh, when we add that press conference on, they don't always have the press conference, but, of course, that will add more to it. And uh, Bernanke will be wrapping up here pretty soon, right? So will be, you know, passing everything off. So, anyways, I uh, get some nice volatility right there. And, uh, but we also got to watch out for that implied volatility. I had a trader uh, who's been trading news, uh, not really so much feedback haven't you know i don't know if he's using the news plan or not but he kept uh, he was thinking that the the uh the exchange like the natix exchange i mean they're just they're hosing me on pricing on these spreads and uh you know, he didn't understand how they work and i showed this before I'll, maybe i'll show it again maybe uh, tomorrow but if we compare the cme's call options with buying a spread with the same floor you do five of them to equalize it okay you have the same amount of risk. They're priced the exact same. They're on a Black Scholes model. You know, if I buy a put on the CME and I sell a spread with the same ceiling as that put strike, they're going to be priced the same. 
So there's no market manipulation by the exchange of the price, and the exchange has nothing to do with the pricing. They are the exchange. They're facilitating the transaction between the buyer and the seller. They're not making bid ask spread. They're not making or losing premium. They're not, you know, they're there for exchange fees. That's it. So the market maker or other traders are the ones that are impacting that price. And they're doing that, again, based on implied volatility. So when you go with the news, there is going to be an expected move built in to the pricing. And the way that you make money on that is because the market goes further than that. It's a fundamental shock. It's more than the expected impact. And so you want to know what those stats are. Like if it's going to move 60 pips high to low, whatever, you don't know what those stats are. So what if it, if it moves 30 pips down and 30 pips up, you're like, oh, that's 60 pips high to low. I probably need to be looking to get out. Uh, or it moves, you know, 60 pips up. Well, I don't want to risk $60 on a 60 pip move trade because then I'm probably going to break even, even if I get there. So you, you need to know those stats to know what kind of risk you should be taking when you should be looking for exiting. You also need to be looking at just the announcement that comes out. So did it come out as expected? Did it come out with conflicting? Like, let's say you had four reports and two were good and two were bad. Well, then that may mean that, you know, you need to get out of the trade because, you know, it's going to, the good is going to be stunned by the bad. So just, you know, it's, you got to learn how to read the news reports a little bit. you got to learn how to look at that option pricing, make sure it stays with inside your risk-reward model. And if it's not there, you got two choices. Okay, One is you just don't take the trade. That's a wise choice. Okay, You don't have to force the trade. Just because there's news doesn't mean you have to trade it. Another choice um, is you can go in, and we'll look at a couple of these. One of them is you can just do the opposite. If it's just too expensive... Just go the other way. Odds are in your favor, okay? Um, the thing is that volatility can be sucked out. So you don't have to be, you know, somebody goes, they're hosing me on the pricing. They're making it way too expensive. Well, you can be the guy that's getting the too expensive side, okay? You can be the seller instead of the buyer. So that's not really a valid argument when you can be the guy on the other side of the trade. It's not like you can only be the buyer of the premium. You can be the seller of the premium, and you can do it with defined risk. The third one, which we may look at on the FOMC tomorrow, um, I'm going to look at a couple different methods. But one of them is literally you may just decide to go directional with the news trade. And I'll show you how to go with a lower risk. And a uh, very low risk, if you're right, you make a lot. If you're wrong, you don't lose that much. And you know there's going to be a big move. So we'll look at a way to do that and a way to do binary strangles on the news that we haven't talked about. So it'll be, it'll be a fun Wednesday show next week. Um, Let's see here. Uh, we also have the monetary policy statement coming out on Thursday out of Japan. Um, we'll have the unemployment claims here in the U.S., uh, Spanish bond auctions, uh, random times when those come out. So uh, we'll have pound retail sales at 430 on Thursday. So we got some, you know, decent uh, reports. Also, what's up? we got existing home sales. So there'll be uh, some decent news next week. And then Friday, we're going to wrap it up with final GDP uh, coming out of... Uh, Britain, so that'll be a nice uh, big move right there, and then the USD CAD, uh, we're going to have their core CPI and retail sales all coming out at once, that'll make a great uh, straddle trade that we'll be looking for as well next Friday, so a lot of news coming up next week to make up for the lack of it this week, stay right there, we'll be back right after this break. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl takes your phone calls now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, so we're just checking things out, talking about you know some of the lessons you need to learn on news. Um, don't trade every high impact announcement. Know your average high to low. So when I say 60 pips average high to low two hours after, that doesn't mean 60 pips from the announcement up or 60 pips from the announcement down. That means 60 pips high to low. So if it drops 15 and goes up, you know, drops 15 from like right before the announcement, but it goes up 45 pips. From right before the announcement, that'd be 60 pips high to low. So just knowing that is huge. Um, again, knowing you know, are they too expensive? Well, if they are, don't take the trade or go the opposite direction. Um, so let's see here. Let's check out some of the things that we can look at. I uh, we'll want to go in and we'll fly through a few of these charts. See what we got. Looks like we got uh, let me update my template here makes it a little easier all right okay so uh looking on over here and just uh, not seeing a lot on the russell today pretty flat and choppy and um so obviously not the markets you would want to be focusing on um today right there just with that kind of movement uh, looking on over at the Dow, at least it has some nice trend right there. Uh, we moved a uh, deviation high to low right there on the Dow. And so that would have given you a really nice opportunity to go in. Um, 
And this is again, I cannot stress how important this is um, on the deviation levels. You know, we put we post these every day. They're so huge, they're insanely accurate day after day after day. But uh, you put that right there, you measure it. You're like, okay, 150 pip, 150 ticks, basically high to low. So go over here and go high to low, and notice how we actually exceeded that one deviation high to low move, even though we didn't hit the minus one deviation level. And that's so important that you get that, especially if you're doing volume spike trades and things like that as well because that's really where I look for them. I look for those volume spikes at those deviation levels and they help out a ton um, in finding you know, really good reversal trades and even if you're not being a contrarian trader just where to stop adding in, where to tighten your stops. So if you don't want to be a contrarian trader you still need to know hey at, what, at some point I need to uh, protect my profits, right? I need to know this thing isn't going to go in the same direction forever all day long. And if I'll do that, that'll help me out a lot. Like right over here, we got uh, the Dow's moving down. This is even after hours. Uh, you can use the deviations, you know, and market's moving on down, moving on down, and then finally reverses and starts going on back up. And But we can see we got a volume spike right there at the end. And not my preferred time to get them, but you know what? It was at the one deviation level. So... Uh, yeah, that's something that can help you a ton. Let's go and let's check out a couple of the other indices. We'll go and we'll look over at the S&P. On the S&P, just not uh, getting massive moves today, uh, especially after yesterday's move where it really pulled down. And uh, lots of volume spikes. And uh, what does that mean? What do these volume spikes mean? And basically what it means is the volume bar is twice that of the two bars on each side of it. And uh, so to see that many volume spikes just appearing everywhere, I mean, they're just reaching constantly trying to find orders. And it's not having the consistent volume flow. And uh, so, you know, just be when you see stuff, expect the market to be a little choppier whenever that happens. Um, and let's see, what else can we look at? We'll look over at the uh, NASDAQ. So on the NASDAQ, I got the same thing. Really, the only one that's trended for us much at all today is the Dow, as far as the major U.S. indices go. Um, we can also check it out. I uh, look over at the DAX. Working on getting deviation levels going on the DAX. Um, don't have them yet, but we are working on that. And let's see here. Uh, one of the uh, let's check out where we're at on our uh, corn contracts right now. I had a nice move earlier. It's pulled on back quite a bit, but still um, not bad at all on the movements right there. Moved down to one and a half, and then I'm uh, actually sitting right now right at the one deviation level. And uh, so, perfect move. This uh, actually gave you a volume spike at the one and a half, but notice how we didn't break the high of the bar afterwards. So we never got an entry to go long right there on that one. Uh, but a nice, nice move on corn. And, of course, lots of volume spikes happening overnight on that because there's just no volume. So it didn't take anything for it to be a volume spike. But once the market opens up, then check it out. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool one. And this is something I've been looking for uh, that you might want to check out. It's just right on the open you'll see these volume spikes happen. And there are a lot of times they're really telling of, you know, you sort of, you know, the classic move would be like the opening channel breakout. This is a volume spike on the open. You get a lot of these, and I've been noticing how insanely accurate they are for hopping in the market directionally right out of the gate. So uh, maybe we'll take a minute and look at those. Stay right here. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. With over three decades of trading experience, Andy Hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. The Technomental Commodity Report gives you Andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market, a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. For all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, visit TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And so uh, going in and checking things out. And what we're looking at right now is, uh, I was just talking about, you know, on the open, especially, you know, markets like ags or uh, even the indices have noticed this uh, when they open up, that you'll get these V-spikes like right at the open. And then they break and then, bam, it's a perfect trade. And so, I mean, that's just one uh, example. And you know, you'd want to go back and look at the market and see, you know, do you see this pattern consistently? Look at there. There's a V-spike. Boom. Flies up. And, uh, you know, I'm just literally pulling them up with you live right here. Boom. V-spike. Boom. Goes up. So, you know, there's your third bar. One, two, three, four. Uh, Whitney got that one. So uh, it was a good trade. Just uh, Whitney got it simply because it never broke that high. But, uh, I mean, it was it was a correct signal. And let's see here. It didn't get a V-spike on this open. I mean, you can just go back and look at these over and over again. But you'll be surprised how many of them do happen and how many of them are accurate. And uh, just, like I said, really, really simple trades. There's a V-spike. Boom. Breaks it low. Goes for about half an hour hour so uh let's see it did call the reversal one of these will call them i mean just like perfect there's a grid one right there you got a one deviation v spike that's that's classic so that's what we're really looking for um and you just go through and use over and over and over again um on the markets and like i said i'll even go in and sometimes i'll be looking at you know the s p and of course i expect there to be you know a volume spike in the morning but i started looking at it like i wonder if because i started noticing 
uh, multiple times when we did get a good volume spike, like right on the opening of the day, that uh, a lot of times that would lead to an immediate reversal um, out of the gate. And so when you do see those, you know, and you might have to check out different time frames. You could look at all four uh, major U.S. indices and see if you see them. But if you do see them, a lot of times they're great, great indicators of great out of, out of the gate, reversal trades, directional with the market. And, um, you know, you know right there, there's one right there. So, boom, got it, flies on up. So, but there's a, there's a lot of these that happen. And so now usually... And you'll, you know, you hear me talk about these. I'd like to do these whenever the market's moved to uh, deviation. But I'm sort of adding in on the open as a, an additional potential trade. And so you got the market coming down, 815, 830, boom, volume spike. Goes over there, then break. You got another volume spike right here. Same price level, okay? Then breaks, and look at that. I mean, it just takes off. So you got a full half deviation. just rocket launch right there, right off of that. So... There are ways to do this, like right there out of the open, where you don't have to necessarily be waiting for it to get to one deviation. If it does, I mean, in my opinion, that's all the better. But uh, that's another trade that you can add in on this volume spike trading methodology. That's uh, pretty sweet. Now, usually when it happens, you'll get a nice move, too. Whereas uh, the one deviation volume spike, sometimes you'll get a big reversal, and sometimes you'll just get uh, the flat choppiness, which is fine because we can just collect premium uh, trading Nadex when we do that. Uh, checking out, looking out over here, uh, we did get a one deviation high to low right there on oil moving on up and then pulling on back down right here. Uh, so we got a volume spike off of that pullback. We can go through it. I mean, oil can have uh, some pretty nice ones, um, if the, especially if you can get them right at that one deviation level. Like here's a volume spike right at the one deviation yesterday. Turns around, that's like right near the close there. And, uh, you know, just on down the list. You'll find these all over the place. So, and the cool thing is there's not, there's, I mean, you're talking like right in the morning, you're talking when one deviation levels are hit. So you can monitor 10, 15 markets um, at a time on this because really you're just looking for those levels to be hit. So it's not like you're doing 10 trades on a single market. You're only going to be probably doing one or two um, on a market in any given day. Um, we got uh, one right here. So let's check out on the NASDAQ. Uh, really no V spikes happening today at all, at least on that time frame. We can go down. Let's look at our metals because our metals moved huge. Uh, we had this massive move down on gold, and uh, but it was early. It was early in the morning, and we're usually, you know, and, and I am testing. I am working with the trader right now. We're testing nighttime ones. Uh, we, most of the V spikes we do, we like to do like in normal cash market hours. But uh, anyways, market moves down one deviation, slams it. Uh, doesn't ever uh, actually trigger. That one slams would have triggered, but you wouldn't have been trading this because you actually don't even get the intraday binaries to do this on until 8 a.m. But um, at 5 a.m., but then goes down, slams the one and a half, and then right down there, right to two, and sitting right at the two deviation level right now. But uh, just a nice, nice move um, on gold, moving, like I said, two deviation levels on the day. Looking on over at silver, we're talking about some moves, right? So uh, it was just a huge move over here on the silver markets. And um, actually busted through the two deviation mark. We got to move down 0 0.5, 0 0.71. It actually hesitated right at the one deviation, which we expect. Uh, but then fell on down to one and a half, pulled right back to that. And then it fell down to the two. And now it's just been sitting right here in between really two and three deviations. Just a massive, massive move on silver. So if you caught that trend, congratulations. That was an awesome stellar day right there over there on silver for you. Uh, going in looking at copper. Not doing near as much compared to the other metals. And um, let's see, we got oil and natural gas we can look at. Like so we got that spike up on oil today uh, at the one deviation level, pulling on back on that high to the low. So it's so important. Um, talking to another trader, we're talking about, hey, when it goes one deviation, that's usually when I want to type my stops. I want to stop taking longs. And uh, so it does actually make that move right at that one deviation. So we decide to go ahead and chill out at that point, back off of the trades. Looking on over at natural gas, uh, we got to move up. Look at that perfect, perfect move. One deviation level. Yesterday we had that move one deviation level from high to low before it turned around and actually ran up all the way two deviations. And then today moved up one deviation level and then turned right on back around. Now that's, you know, chilling out at settlement. So understanding how far the market will move on any given day based on how far the market says it will move. And that's why these levels work. That's why they will help you. 
whether you're a futures trader, we have them on forks. If you're a forex trader, um, if you know, even if you're an ETF trader, you could use these um, levels. You know, there'll be a slight difference in price, like if you're doing spiders versus S and P, but the difference is easy to calculate. If you ever have a question, just let me know. Um, and we'll be adding here in the next 60 days. We actually will be releasing two things. One, we'll be releasing five-day deviation levels, not just one day. And we'll be adding in over 40 futures, um, at least 30, if not 40 more forex pairs, plus 3,000 stocks, ETFs, and options. So our goal is to have that out within the next 60 days and uh, making that available for you. And by doing that, it'll allow you to apply this to a lot of stuff. But the, the big thing is this. You have to have that if you're if you're going to be a day trader. Um, you need to have a, a realistic expected move. Even if you're a longer-term trader, let's say you're going in, this is a point where you might want to hedge off for the day. You know, if you're going in, you're going long on natural gas, you're taking a longer position, then you know you may want to go in and put a hedge when this thing hits a one deviation move because there's a good chance that you're going to give up some of that profit intraday as the market pulls back. That might be where you want to go in and put on a spread or a put or you know a binary. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can hedge off. Uh, but this will give you a way to know where to sort of, you know, think, hey, you know what, I probably, uh, you know, got everything I'm going to get out of the day. Why don't I go ahead and protect my position at this point and, um, you know, just enjoy that profit. If it keeps going, hey, you can still make some money. If it falls back, you don't have to give it all back. So uh, also, you know, you stop buying. So you're not that guy that, you know, we've all been there, right? Buys at the top of the market. Well, that's the person who's buying up above the one deviation level. And are there days where it goes further? Yeah. But is that the majority of the days? No. Uh, so we go over here. I mean, there's a two deviation move on natural gas. Awesome move. But most days, we're not looking for that kind of move, even on natural gas. It's built in. So one out of the last five days, it's really broken a deviation level by a significant amount. Well, that probably tells you your odds are against you right there. I mean, that's just 80% of the time right there. Okay. Uh, and we're expecting 70% of the time it won't break it. So 80% of the time it really didn't break it that by that much. We can even go over and look at, you know, more volatile markets. Let's check them out. Like, look at gold and go, okay, what do we expect here? Well, we uh, had a massive two deviation move today. Awesome. Okay. But we didn't get it yesterday. We got uh, about a two deviation the day before that. So we've had some big moves. That was obviously a news day. But most of these days, I mean, we're looking for one, maybe one and a half on gold. If you can get the one deviation move and it hits that most of the time, that's awesome. There's no reason to keep going for more. Stop being greedy, you know. Um, and it just it lets you know at what point is your greed taking over. <laughs> so because if uh, you're still going for entries past a deviation, your uh, your greed's interfering a little bit. And you can find some markets that maybe do do it more consistently. But again, if I mean if you can just get that, you know, if you can get like two thirds of that middle deviation move. In other words, let's say a deviation is, we'll just say, you know, 10 points, okay? If you can get seven points of a one deviation move in a day, you're a master trader, okay? You don't have to get the seven up and the four down and the three side, you know. If you can get two-thirds of a one deviation move in a day, that's, that's the move you want. That's what you're going for, okay? That's the expectation um, of movement. And that's really what you want to make your target. Not can I get can I you know get out at the top and get out at the bottom and that's just not a realistic long term game plan. And I remember reading that a long time ago saying, you know, and sometimes we'll even say the middle third. If you can get just the middle third of a trend, then that's enough. <laughs> so I try to go for like two thirds, but the reason I do that is because I use the deviations. So I have a more realistic, you know, expectation on how far a market's gonna move. And by doing that, that allows me to, you know, go, okay, well, this is sort of what I'm going for. And once I got that, I'm probably, you know, I don't see a big reason to keep going for more. So because the probability of me giving it back is higher. And so if I think 15 points is the move, then, you know, if I could get, if I grab 10 points out of that day, that's awesome. I mean, that is just fantastic, stellar, awesome. Do I really need to go for the other possible five, six, or seven points? And, um, you know, just keeping it simple. So uh, anyway, so there's our metals. We went over our energies. Um, we'll check out a few of our, we also went over our ags. And uh, so now let's check out a few of the FX pairs and uh, see how they're doing right now. We got the Aussie dollar. And uh, look at that. Uh, just a massive, insanely massive move. 
Uh, Aussie dollar moving on down there and a hundred pip move. Uh, there's a break in that. So if you got in that and you got, you know, that one deviation, you tighten in that stop. You don't care where you get stopped out. Things just flying down and flying down all morning long. I mean, look at that. Ever since what, 830? Just, I mean, this massive fall kept on going. Um, if we go over, we can check out the, but uh, sitting right there at that deviation level. So you have the Euro yen. And it's just uh, been hopping all around, but uh, heading long this morning. It actually is seasonally long today, and uh, meaning uh, most uh, this trading day of the month, the yen usually does rise, and it's keeping in check with that expectation. And look at it where it at is right now. One, it's basically a triple top on the day. Two, it's right at a one deviation level. So, and it has it actually hit its one deviation high to low earlier this morning. I like got 3 a.m. pulled back and ran back up to it. And we're back at the exact same level right now, except basically at a triple top. Probably not the place where you want to keep adding on to buying on the Euro Yen at this moment. Could it keep going? Yes. Are your probabilities high that it will keep going? No. Therefore, you're really taking a lower probability entry trade by doing so. You're probably better just fading the thing or staying away. Um, looking on over. Now, that's that's if you're adding on to a long. If you got in down here, you know, you tighten your stops up, all that fun stuff. Uh, let's see here. We got the uh, euro dollar on the euro dollar. Got a nice move. Uh, did move one deviation high to low. It actually just hit that here in the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, but moving on down, so I expect it to start pausing and hesitating for the day right now. Uh, we go in. We check out the pound yen. And uh, it's really nice. We've been able to add in some of these cross currencies. So we got the pound yen, and it uh, busted up past one deviation. It's bouncing up and down between uh, basically 0.5 and 1 most of the day. And uh, sitting pretty much right at one dev level on the day at this moment. And uh, diving into pound dollar. We got pound dollar. It ran up. Flew up a deviation from low to high. Okay, bounced off that 0.7 level, but we'll get low to high. Flew up an entire deviation there. Then flew on back down an entire deviation. And went on down almost to the negative one deviation level. Just a big, big, massive move. A great move. A lot of tradability. A lot of good volatility right there in the pound today. Uh, checking out the dollar cad. Over here on the dollar cad, we got to move all the way up. I mean, it's just been a big, big move all the way up to one and a half deviations on the day. And we'll look at dollar franc and then wrap up the FX pairs with dollar yen. On uh, dollar franc, we, again, we did get that move, uh, one deviation high to low. Okay, really important to understand that. Imagine that low to high. Got that perfect one deviation move, and we're basically, you know, stalling out right now, right around that level. And it looks like a lot of the currencies are done um, with their big move. So, would be looking to do a lot of add-ins at the moment. And then dollar yen showing uh, some massive strength, almost able to push a one and a half deviation move. and uh, But did a nice move on up to the one deviation level chilled out there for about an hour and decided to do one last run into the end of the day uh, to uh, make it happen. So, I mean, it was just a nice, nice trend. It's pretty much all morning right there on a good chunk of the currencies. If you're trading the currencies, hopefully you had a uh, really good morning. And uh, stay there. We'll be right back. We'll go through a few more things to wrap up the day. And uh, I'll be back with you right after this break. always taken the long view when it comes to investing but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose what if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk at direction funds we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns smart investors deserve smart alternatives find yours at directionfunds.com an investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to The Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour over here. And so uh, we're just uh, wrapping up a few things we talked about. You know, we got some big news coming out next week. Wanted to go into uh, just understanding the deviation levels and that helping you on uh, knowing when to uh, start tightening your stops, uh, stop adding in positions in that direction, um, hedging off if you're a longer-term position trader. Um, if you're a contrarian trader looking for like a V-spike for a potential uh, you know, contrarian reversal trade that you can take advantage of. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. So you want to be able to put all those pieces together. And, uh, you know, as a contrarian trader, you know, you want to have as many things in your favor as possible. And so like, that's one of the reasons why I do trade Nadex is because I can actually stack the probabilities in my favor. And if I'll manage my risk correctly, I can go in and I can actually have um, the risk in my favor as well by, you know, knowing when to get out of a trade. And so you can go in and use, like, the binaries. You can use the spreads. And you just go and you choose that in the money binary contract um, as soon as it you know presents itself as being available. So if you're like, you know what, this is probably done for the day. The Dow's probably not moving anymore. You know, it's went down, 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 and uh, you know, basically hitting that one deviation level. I think it may bounce off that. And uh, I was looking at a trader with this earlier, and he was talking about, hey, should I be tightening my stops now? And I was like, you know, based on, you know, multiple things we were talking about, I was like, well, based on it hitting a one deviation level, 
yeah, that'd probably be a good, you know, that's a justifiable reason to, you know, you don't want to tighten them just because you're afraid that you're going to give up money. Um, and it sounds funny, but I mean, really, you don't want to make your trading decisions simply based on your P&L, simply based on, um, you know, fear and greed, because you could give up a lot of money by doing that. But if there's a reason to tighten that stop, such as, hey, it's moved to deviation, I don't expect it probably to move further. It may. Maybe this is going to be one of those days where it moves two deviations like gold did or almost three like silver did. So it may. And if it does, I want to get as much of that as I can. But I want to also protect my profits. But I don't want to protect them so soon that I knock out my chance to be able to actually make profits. And I want to let my profits run. And so letting the chart give you the reason to tighten your stop, not your P&L. One of the things I've taught uh, some traders I've worked with, and it's worked well for me and for them, is I'll actually, and this requires that you don't over risk your account, okay? Otherwise, you, you just won't be able to do it. But going in and actually hiding your P&L, okay? So we'll actually hide our profit and loss, not be able to see that column, and just trade on the chart. And of course, I, you know, I know, like, if I risk this many contracts, and this is my thing, this is the most I can lose on this trade. Then it doesn't matter anymore, okay? I don't have to worry about my P&L because I'm I, I, that risk is acceptable. Not that anybody wants to lose, but that's part of trading. It's, it's part of the expenses. But if I know the risk is acceptable out of the gate, then I'm now free to allow the chart to tell me what to do. If the risk is not acceptable and i got to win, then I'm going to make decisions based on money as if my P&L has anything to do with what's going to happen next in that chart, which it doesn't have, obviously, anything to do with it, even though we somehow seem to think it does because what I will tell you is whenever it does it seems to always know where your stop is and it will find you when you're that worried about your loss but if your loss is one that is acceptable one that is you know intelligent if it is a you know a, a, an intelligent risk uh, based on your account size then you can really relax it's not all about money now it's about the chart you let the chart tell you what to do you follow the chart let the chart tell you when to tighten those stops when to look for those reversals and just trade them but you got to trade within correct risk management parameters. Biggest psychology mistake you can make, risking too much money. So, all right, we'll stay right there. Y'all uh, stay tuned. We have another great show coming up for you right after this. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.